Here's a quick question from Hi Rick. I'm hoping that that's pronounced the right. Maybe you could give a video to precise the different ways to use the slice and which are your preferences. Also, I think that there might be ways to learn to use the slice without changing too much the position of the hand, but I do it wrong. I forgot someone in the shop told me that they also use slide number two, but I don't remember how. By the way, I'm playing this beautiful Adams uh, A4LT and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, it's been with me since September and uh, it's been one of the better horns that I've ever owned. So, slides, real quick. As we know, uh, we've got, well, I'll start at the beginning. First slide, which goes with the first valve. Second slide, which goes with the second valve. And then over here, we've got the third slide, which goes with the third valve. And also we have our tuning slide. Now for me, what's been really interesting is that for the longest time, my tuning slide was probably all the way out here. And I attribute it to me not having an efficient setup and essentially working way too hard to gain the sound that I had. So um, the first thing to figure out is where does the tuning slide go? And for me, it all relates back to resonance. And for that, I will uh, also put a link to my recent video about resonance and my thoughts on that. But really important that we learn about this resonance. So, going to the first, or well, what my preference is, I guess. The first valve slide, I don't find myself using that much. In fact, the only time I use it is when there's some mechanical issues with the third slide here. Um, but I keep this lubricated. Also, here's a trick or a tip rather, whenever you're operating these things, make sure you press the valve down that it, it belongs to, um, which will eliminate the uh, air pressure buildup inside the horn, um, which my instrument repair, repair guy says is something you should want to avoid. Uh, the second valve slide. Now, it, interesting, you say that someone in your shop told you about uh, manipulating the second slide. I've never really done that, and I don't know how anyone would do that. Maybe there is a trumpet out there that does it, but certainly none of the ones that I've ever owned have allowed me to manipulate this uh, second uh, valve slide. And then the third valve slide. Now, you've asked about, you know, how do I do it? It took me a long time, and here's, here's something that you want to experiment with. It took me a long time to find the perfect or the most comfortable grip for me. And, of course, what we do is we... Well, what some of us do, and certainly what I did, is I looked at all the great players. You know, I looked at players that hold it like this and, you know, are just playing beautiful music. I looked at uh, players that hold it like this, playing beautiful music, like this, playing beautiful music. Um, some of them might even hold it like this. I don't know how, but there are various ways to hold this trumpet. You have to find the way that's most comfortable for you and that allows you to freely operate what needs to be operated on the trumpet. So with my younger students, they've got small hands. And if you notice on the student model trumpets, you have this ring that's, on, uh, that's adjustable. It's on like this little, you know, it has a little screw here. It lets you move it back and forth. Uh, there's two purposes for that as far as I can tell. One is to take it out all the way so you can put a, a music lyre here so you can read music while you're marching. But the second reason is so that this ring can be moved closer to accommodate smaller hands. And as the, uh, the younger trumpet player grows, uh, you can move this slide back, back, back until again you um, have it in a comfortable position. Okay? So for me, this grip here with my left hand has been the most comfortable. And it's allowed me to have a, you know, I feel secure with this hand. All the, all the weight of the horn rests in this hand. When I use my right hand, I don't have any of the weight here. I, I might, um, sometimes I've been focusing on this, anchoring my thumb here. Um, some people like to anchor their thumb between first and second valve. Uh, that's sort of how some method books to prescribe to start out. Um, I've even tried this, and uh, I forget who told me about this, but leaving your thumb up here so that um, basically you can really uh, focus on finger exercises, and uh, some people believe that this is the most efficient way to operate with your right hand the valves. So experiment. 
Now, before I get, uh, I hope that answers your question. So, um, oh yeah, specifically for notes. So for sure, you want to have this out if you're just operating the third, like I do, or if some people might operate the first and the second uh, and the third. Sorry, you definitely want to have it out for our low D. <laughs> to bring that in tune. But again, focus on resonance and then look at tuning. And the C sharp. Okay, so I have it, uh, maybe actually it was a little bit too far out for that. And it depends on the horn you play. I have had, I've had Jupiter horns, I've had Adam's horns now, I've had Yamaha horns. Um, I've borrowed various horns over the years and they're all slightly different. So you really have to spend some time on your horn and get to know it, figure it out, see where the, see where the notes lie, see how it feels to play that note and what you're doing with the slides, okay? Um, I also know that you've asked about pedal tones and how they relate to slides and I will do a separate video on that um, because I've got that planned um, in the next week or two. I hope this has been helpful. Um, I will, as always, put uh, links to videos I've referenced below. Um, if you would like, please sign up to my uh, email list where I'm providing uh, free um, practice sessions that are geared towards Arvin's Characteristic Study 9. We've got session one up already. Um, we're all working on it, uh, the people that have downloaded it. And I will be putting up session two in the next coming uh, little short while. And again, I thank you so much for your support. It's really meant a lot to me to uh, hear from all of you, to hear questions, comments, and get all the feedback. And of course, suggestions about what you like to hear about when it comes to trumpet or just being a dad in general. Thank you very much. And as always, happy practicing.